Hi everyone, Ray from Pro String. Pro String London, to be exact. Lots of Pro Strings out there these days, it seems. Um, today's racket, Wilson Clash 100, 16 by 19, 11.0 SI. We'll be using the Wilson Maximum Spin, I believe it's called. Wilson Spin, yeah, well, Resolve. Wilson Resolve and Spin. Gauge is 130. This client, I think, is a intermediate, beginner intermediate. He's gone for the completely wrong string. But anyway, I'll explain that to him when uh, when he uh, picks up his racket, that in the future he should probably go for a multi-filament. But anyway, six holes in the bottom, guys. Which means we always start from the top. Six holes, three loops. There's our first. And now, because we have one string to each side, we are going to do seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got another machine going in the background, just FYI, somebody I'm teaching who's Kai. Can't see him. Um, so I may pause every now and again to help him out if need be, but I think he's on the right track, despite having a little boo-boo a second ago. So we had to backtrack significantly. But anyway, part of learning. Guys, this is the uh, Wilson Clash Minions version. If you're wondering what this paint job is about, yes. <laughs> uh, this client has suggest, has wants balance of power and control. Um, brand new racket, never been strung before. So what do we do? Always up two kilos or 4.4 pounds. If your machine doesn't do 0.1, Round it off to a 0.5 or to the next pound, um, which is fine as well. No issues there. I find that new rackets do lose more than two kilos tension. So as always, three strings to each side and on mains. Compensating the tension on the frame, stringing symmetrically. You don't want to string all your mains to one side and then the other. You could cause significant damage to your racket, deform it, possibly even break it. If the, string, if the racket's quite weak or old, or just a cheaper version, uh, a cheaper model. But yeah, be careful with that. As I'm doing now, three to each side. And then from three, we go to six, which we're gonna do in a second, and then six to eight. 1619 stringing pattern. I believe it is anyway. 16, do, 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 where are you? 1619, correct, yes. We are going to do a two knot stringing job. Sorry, two knot, four knot, two pieces as to one piece, two knots. Drink, sorry. I think on my sixth or seventh racket already today. It's so, uh, coming up to 2 p.m. Yep, coming up to 2 p.m. UK London time. To be precise, in Acton, West London. easiest way is just to keep your hand when, when you're pulling the string keep your hand just as you're pulling the cross again try to get a little bit closer to the frame you don't have to not super close but not that far either kind of sliding a bit So guys, my seventh main. Uh, 
up your tension 15 to 20 percent on your last main or on any of your last strings that you pull before doing a uh, finishing knot not on your starting knots no need to up the tension on starting knots Kai is struggling today on the crosses a little bit. Keeps for forgetting to go always opposite to your top cross string, which I'll show you guys in a moment. Something very simple, but you know, it's just attention to, to detail. Making sure you're always doing the opposite as to your previous cross string. And it doesn't matter how you start your first one, your first cross string, it's just very important to always do the opposite on the next one, of course. Is the uh, all there, the pointy thing? All oh, is it underneath? Yeah, somewhere. Maybe on the on the on the bottom compartment, maybe. Yeah, thank you. And you rack it sometimes to widen the hole. Very necessary tool. Parnell knot as always guys. <clears throat> Alright, that's our mains done guys. Now onto the crosses. Tie yourself a knot, our third knot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. This set of string has loads. Lots of leftover string in this set. Wilson seems to be very generous, which is a good thing. I don't think there'll be enough. There won't be us. So I'll show you what I'm going to after. It's okay. So if you start running out of string, just instead of doing one ahead, just go for um, just one in one, let's say. Yeah, which is a bit trickier. That's why we string one ahead, guys, to make the next weave easier. So what do you mean one ahead? So we, what I mean by one ahead is, so I'll show you now. So I, I string, I put one through, I put one, I weave one through, and then I weave another one. That simply is just called one ahead, because if you just do one at a time, it makes life a bit more difficult. So I'll do that one and then. Okay. Then <coughs> How much string have you got? So yeah, just try, try one more, see if you want enough. If not, then just one by one. We always do two, right? Which is called one ahead. It's just the way it's called. One ahead, one in front. As I'm doing now. So I've already got one in, but I'm putting in a second one. Because it's easier to do it this way around. It's easier to make that second weave. Run well, far, run over. Yeah, so you may have enough, may not, just see what you can do. Yeah. That's fine. It's gonna, don't worry, just put it, it's gonna come out, it's okay. You just have to, uh, just have to accept it, that's fine. Yeah. I just do one by one. So when you have enough string like I do, for example, or you did before, then you just carry on, right? But... Now pull that exactly now. Just pull one at a time. Now you're gonna see how much more difficult it is. Put your hand on the string, support the string. Oh, push it, push it. So like, I always, for me, it's automatic, of course. You're still learning out, so. <clears throat> you see, as soon as I'm gonna pull the string, I've already got my hand on it, look. Even before I pull the string. And then I just, you just not even have to push it more. If you, if you support the string in the right time, let's say, you don't even need to push it up. You just need to support it so it doesn't come down. Because you just want to keep your strings as straight as possible.
I don't think I'll have enough of this. Don't worry, I'll sort it out. It's just a matter of habit, keeping your hand in the right place in order to push the string up a little bit or support it so it doesn't come down. It's just remembering all these small things. There's lots of small things. So I put my hand on there, tension the string, keep it nice and straight. So then at the end, yeah, we can do, we can do one more, I think. And then uh, once I finish this racket here, I'll, I'll finish it up. far as it goes yeah turn it around a little bit and then what you're going to do is that oh, first yeah. so you see that the strings have their own down Really important, guys, to keep your strings nice and straight. I know at the beginning it's not easy. I'll, I'll sort of take a little, take a quick break, and I'll finish it up when I finish this in five minutes. I'll then finish it. Kai needs to start working out, get some muscle. Jesus. As you guys can see, again, always supporting that cross string when I'm pulling it to make sure I don't have any, or well, too many at least, strings that I need to move around afterwards. Very interesting paint job, I have to say. It's not, I don't even think of the paint jobs, they're covers, I think. It's not that it gets painted like that. I think so. I think they're just covers that go on the racket. But I could be wrong. Maybe it is a paint job. I don't know. It's got to be a paint job, right? Guys, if you know... This, this racket in itself, leave a comment in the uh, comment box. Do you think it has like some special kind of wrap that goes over the racket? Or is this actually a paint job? Because if it's a paint job, it's very uh, specific one. <laughs> but I'm almost sure it's like, a, like a, a wallpaper, but for tennis rackets. Let me know your thoughts. favorite Kai. Yeah. Downstairs in the front room next yeah. to the entrance there's um, a whole bunch of rackets sat by the sofa I think leaning against the sofa. Can you just bring them all up? Yeah. Please. Thank you. Saves me going downstairs. Three flights of steps to get up here.
Right, our last last cross string up my tension. 15 to 20% guys is the recommendation. Find your nearest anchor string or your main string that you're gonna tie it on, preferably the closer the better, and in a hole where you don't have to uh, use the awl, I guess. If necessary, then yes, use the awl. But as you saw, it just went through really easily. Parnell knot, as always. Very clean looking knot, holds tension brilliantly. And uh, that's it. Next one. There you go, guys. Wilson Clash 100, 16 by 19, 11.0 SI. Oh, like a board. This guy should have really not gone for polyester. Hopefully he'll be okay though. Straighten up your strings, hopefully not much to do. I'm just very minimal here for me. Um, I like to just make sure and play around with them a little. Guys, happy minions. There you have it. The uh, Wilson Clash minions. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully some useful stuff for you there. And uh, have a good one. Thanks for tuning in again. Happy stringing. Bye-bye.